841, the morning after popular and longtime city councilor Kim Crishell told Edmontonians, not only will you not seek the mayor's chair, you're not going to seek re-election. Yeah. I think you surprised a few people yesterday. I gather that I did, uh, and it was a tough decision to make, but... You know, I just realized I need to focus on family, and that's really where I, I mean, my son's turning 13. He's hit the teen years, and he's big into mogul freestyle skiing, and so we're in Jasper now in the winter times, and we'll have to go to a lot of other ski hills, because he's, he's, he loves it, and, Is know, there an Olympic gold medal in the Chriselle family yet? No? Well, we'd love it. Yeah. I think my brother-in-law in particular, because he's a sports guy, but uh, you, you, you don't know. I mean, this, it's a long haul for that, but certainly if that's the way that Alex wanted to to go, of course, we'd be totally supportive. I want to, uh, I mean, of course, we're sitting here talking, talking to Councillor Chriselle, but if I can just talk to Kim for a second, uh, three terms on council. Yeah. You're a mom, uh, your, your husband is, is involved in a business here in town. You've got a whole lot of other things going on. Do people really understand the taxing nature of the job that elected officials have? No, I, I think oftentimes people think the politicians are just, you know, going to a lot of free events, they get food. I mean, I hear that a lot. And oh, you get to have fun in your job. They don't realize we're in charge of huge budgets and we have to read all the documents that go with those budgets. And I mean, you can look at Mayor Mandel, he does five functions a night. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's, for me, that's I think the biggest struggle of the job is going to all the functions. I've always been an issues person. I like to get things done and then turn it over and that's what I get excited about. And so for me, I like the neighborhood renewal projects. So I like doing the community meetings. Well, when you're doing the community meetings, let me tell you, you're not done any time early. You're not home to no. your 13-year-old to ask him Absolutely. how his day at school was. or Well, how or look and make sure he's getting his homework done, which I was, you know, checking the other night. So he, he's getting to that point where grades are really going to matter. And, yeah, I, I want to be there more and with my husband more. You know, you've got some great feedback here on our Facebook page. There's viewers. I mean, let's we could even uh, refresh it right now. I'll take a look in just a second. Let that refresh. Like, I uh, love our city, Ryan. There's no question. When you talk, you, you made you that very clear time. yesterday. You made that very clear, but one of the conversations uh, that kind of jumped out at me was one that we had, a casual one yesterday, where you said, you know what? I'm just sick of the demonization of politicians. What do you mean by that? Well, here's the problem. Every time we see the negative stories about politicians, and they're, they're in there all the time, and I don't say that they shouldn't be there because some of our politicians aren't doing what they should be doing. But the more that you get that, the more I hear, and I created Next Gen, which I know you've been very mm -hmm. active in. And uh, one of the reasons why I created Next Gen was because I wanted future politicians. I, don't, I, I knew that I didn't plan on being a politician forever. Mm. But we need good people to step up. And local politics, I think, is where it matters. It's where it counts on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think, actually, the local politicians tend to be your best politicians. But I think it's really important to have people at all levels of government. I mean, the party system I've always had a little more challenge with. It's a different gig. But uh, local politics, we need people to step up who want to move our city forward, mm. or whatever your issues are. But if we don't have people stand up for the job, which I hear all the time, well, I'd never consider it. You know, we had the Dragon's Den lady, she was at some function, yeah. and I said, what about you running for politics? She said, well, I wouldn't consider it because I'm too real. Mm. And I kind of looked at her and I said, I'm real too. I'm actually a real person, I'm not some robot. Politicians are real, we have families, we have lives, and we do this as a service. It's not, you know, something that we're doing so that we can be called a counselor or, or called the mayor. I mean, that's why Stephen Mandel, I think, has been so popular, because he is what you see. When he's mad, we all know it. When he's happy, we all know it. One of the things that he let us all know was how he felt about Councillor Kerry Diot's bid for mayor. I don't mean yes, well, I don't want to put I, you I in a tough spot. Uh, this is my question, and these are my words, <laughs> Go for it, not Ryan. anybody else's. <laughs> but I have a theory that there's a couple city councillors that are along the same line of thinking. I'm thinking of yourself and Amarjeet Sohi, and I wonder if there's any method behind the decision not to run for mayor that's trying to avoid a vote split that would potentially see councillors along the same lines of thinking defeated by another councillor that works along a very different line of thinking. Kerry Diod is who I'm talking about. Yeah. Did that play into your role? Were you afraid of a vote split at all with this upcoming election? Well, I mean, unfortunately for me, family was the biggest consideration, so that's why I was making my decision. And I, I was struggling with whether I should stay on council or not, more than necessarily going for the big one. But uh, I think for Amarjeet, I, I thought that he made a really good decision because I do think it's true. If you have tons of vote splitting, who knows who's going to be the mayor of Edmonton? 
And I don't have an issue with Kerry. I get along with Kerry. I, I just am surprised he hasn't shown us what his platform is and where he wants to go for a vision in the city of Edmonton. I mean, we've done a lot of visionary projects. I know we need to operationalize a lot of things. LRT, I mean, we're bringing new li lines on and uh, it costs us a lot of money, but what are you gonna do? Uh, that's what we want to hear from a mayoral candidate. And right now, I haven't heard anything. All right, Kim, you know what? Uh, we're going to have to talk to you again before you leave office because I know that you've still got some unfinished business. You're going to be working hard over the next four months. Absolutely. On behalf of Edmontonians who've watched you do your thing for three terms, thanks for your service. Well, thank and you. And it's great thank to talk you, to you Ryan. today. And, and thanks to the media. You guys, it's important to cover city issues. You bet. Our pleasure. It's what we do. It's what we love to do. Kim Chriselle, she's still got four months in office, and then she moves on. Family first. It's 8.46. We're back right after this.